So number one then from the second paper of the 2016 Higher Maths. Here we go, the lines question, nine marks here, three parts. Usually the three parts would be something like find the equation of one line, find the equation of another line, and then find the point of intersection. Much the same here apart from the last part, which is not what's the point of intersection, but show that the line passes through, or one of the lines, passes through a certain point. So the first part is, state the coordinates of M, which is the midpoint of QR, and hence find the equation of PM, the median through P, for three marks. Now that seems to be guiding you into it so that you don't make a mistake, because it could just have said find the equation of the median from P. And you'd have had to know you're meant to go to the midpoint of the opposite side. So first part was just state. So you, in other words, you can just write this down and that would be it for the one mark. And of course you could, because you could just say, well, the, the y-coordinates are obvious. What's halfway from two to six, that's four. Maybe not so obvious immediately as what's halfway from negative six to 10. Well, they're 16 apart. Half of that's eight, go back eight, that's two. So you could just have written two, four. But to play safe, you're better going in with the arithmetic, the average of the coordinates. Negative six plus 10, whoops, divided by two, and two plus six for the y coordinates, which means m will be the point. That's four over two is two, that's eight over two, that's four. There's the first mark, just for stating it. So what's the equation of pm? Well, you need a point on it. Well, you know two of them now. We'll put in there, m's the point two, four. You know two of the points, so you can use either of them, but, hmm, later. And it's gradient. Well, I'll have to work out it's gradient. What's the gradient of pm? Now, there's only one mark for this. I'll put the working down. y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. I'm just writing the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's. So that would be, and that point's further over. So four take away negative four for the difference in the y's, and two take away zero for the difference in the x's. That's eight upon two, I'll put it down anyway, which comes to four, so the gradient of PM is four. But at the end of that, it's only worth one mark. And I don't see anything in the marking scheme that indicates that you wouldn't get the mark if all you simply did was state it because you could have stated it just by thinking it out. Zero to two is two along, negative four to eight is eight up, so it's eight over two. And you could have just put started there. Usually put this down. Now the line itself though, you can use either of those points. If you chose the top point, you'd have to go in with y minus b equals mx minus a, y minus the y coordinate, which is four, gradient, four, x minus the x coordinate, which is two. And if you did that, this year, you'd get a mark there, the third mark, but not in future. In future, you're gonna to have to tidy that up to a single constant, back to the way it used to be. So that's four X minus eight plus four is minus four. You'd get the mark here though. However, you shouldn't have done that because you knew where it cut the Y axis. So you should have gone in with Y equals MX plus C. Its gradient is four and it cuts at negative four, so its equation is y equals four x minus four. Third mark. Now for three marks, part B, find the equation of the line L, it gives it a name, passing through M and perpendicular to PR. It's just giving it the name L because you don't know the name of the other point, M to where. So, passing through M and perpendicular to PR means this line here. Well, it's a line, you need two things, a point on it, got it, it's gradient. I can't get the gradient from the other point, so I'll have to reference it to the line PR, because it's perpendicular to PR. So the difference in Y over the difference in the X's. Six take away negative four for the difference in the Y's. 10 take away zero. Well, that's nice and handy because that's 10 over 10. So that comes to one and that gets you the first mark. The gradient of PR is one, which means the perpendicular gradient will be the negative of the reciprocal. So it's negative one over one, which is negative one. There's your second mark. Then, I don't know where it cuts the y-axis, so you go in with y minus b is mx minus a y minus the y-coordinate, which is 4, is negative 1 times x minus the x-coordinate, which is 2, 
Again, you'd get the mark if you left her like that this time, but not in future. Tidy it up to a single constant, so that's y equals negative x, plus 2, plus another 4, plus 6. Well, put the mark there, but it'll be there in future. Now, part C, show that the line L, that's this line here, passes through the midpoint of PR. Well, there's several ways of doing it, but if you just think of show that a point lies in a line, then the way you would do it would be what are the coordinates of the point. So, for the midpoint of PR, it would be halfway from 0 to 10, which I'll just put down as 5. Halfway from negative 4 to 6, which if you add them is 2, so half that is 1. That would get you the first mark. Or you might have, might have written 0 plus 10 upon 2, adding the x's. Negative 4 plus 6 upon 2, adding the y's. And then go into this answer. And then test if that point lies in the line L. Now there's two ways you could set that out. You could put them both into it and check that the left-hand side equal the right-hand side. Or you could simply start with saying if x is 5, that means the line would say y should be the negative of x plus 6, which is 1. And then communicate your conclusion by saying, well, that means it, the point on the line is 5, 1, which is the same point. Same point, or same y coordinate maybe you could have said, which means 5, 1 lies on the line L. Now the other two marks are sort of split up here. One is for putting 5 into the equation of the line, and the second mark is for communicating the result that you got the same answer. Now you might have done that instead by putting them both in. In other words, trying the point 5, 1 in the line L to see if it fits. So if you put the y coordinate at the front and the x coordinate over here, so it's the negative of 5 plus 6, and checking if they come to the same thing. And if you put equals, but you shouldn't really put equals first because you don't know if it's going to work, but then you do get 1 equals 1, which means 5, 1 lies on L. So again, the first mark's for getting the coordinates of the midpoint. The second one mark this time is for putting both the x and the y coordinates into L and then checking if it works and then stating yes it does lie in the line. But this little equal bit's really at this stage you don't really know whether or not they're equal until you get your answer. Strictly speaking that should really be what's the left hand side equal to, what's the right hand side equal to and then since the answer on both sides is the same the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, then you can say the point lies on it. But just now you'll get away just with saying that. Now there is another way mentioned in the marking scheme, which is find the equation of PR. Well, you know it's gradient anyway, so there's not a lot to do there. Because you already had its gradient was 1, and it cuts at negative 4, so that's y equals x minus 4. And then substitute that into the line L, into this one y equals negative x plus 6. You know, just add them the way they are there. That would be 2y equals 2, so y is 1. And then putting it back into either of them, this one here, x equals 1 plus 4 is 5. And there's the point. But then you'd have to show that that was the midpoint of this. And then so you'd work out the midpoint, and then they're both the same. But that's a particularly convoluted way. No, there is another way, and it's not mentioned in the marking scheme, which seems more relevant to this question. If that line, which is perpendicular, is meant to pass through the midpoint of PR, then that line would be a perpendicular bisector, yes, but more than that, because it passes through M here, that means that this triangle, RMP, should be isosceles. If the perpendicular from one of the corners bisects the opposite side, then the triangle must be isosceles. So if you can show it's an isosceles triangle, that means it must bisect the opposite side and you wouldn't even need to work out what those coordinates are in the first place. But that means though you'd have to work out the two lengths, MR and MP. 
So MR would be the square root of, what's the distance between these two points? 10 take away 2 squared and 6 take away 4 squared. So that's the square root of, and that's 8 squared, and that's going to be 2 squared. And MP is going to be the square root of 2 take away 0 squared plus 8 take away negative 4 squared. Which notice are the same two numbers, 2 squared plus 8 squared. I'm going to put a 4 there. And even without working that out, they're obviously the same, you can say MR equals MP, which means triangle MPR is isosceles. Might be more than that. From the information I've got here, it could be one step further, it could be equilateral, but it doesn't matter, it's at least isosceles which means that that line must bisect, which means L must bisect PR. However, that's a lot longer than just finding the corner to the midpoint and checking it fits the line. So the very first method was certainly the quickest.